Hello everyone, good morning to you wherever you are in Grenada, Caracol and Piti Martinique and we're glad to have you. It's another beautiful morning in God's world and certainly hope you certainly had a wonderful night rest and a week to the pleasantries of the morning, birds singing and lovely sunshine here and there. Well again, good morning to you. If you're celebrating a June 16th birthday, it's our pleasure to wish you well this morning and certainly hope friends and colleagues will just just not say happy birthday to you but we'll maybe get a special gift make you feel very special on this day if you're celebrating a wedding anniversary we also want to salute you and certainly hope it rekindles the great memories of many years ago and it's going to be a treasured evening again for you and for those of you who are sick or recovered recuperating we trust that you are heeding to the advice of your health provider and we hope in quick time you will be up and about to do the things that you certainly desire Again, good morning to everyone, and what a pleasure it is to be with you on Spice Morning for another day. We have a list of interesting guests this morning. It's a lead up to Father's Day. We're going to have some, a couple of people talking about Father's Day with us this morning. It's an activity that's going to be staged in the Tempe area, Northeast St. George, and we're going to be talking many other things. Well, for Canadians in Grenada and, Can and people who follow ice hockey, it is the Boston Bruins winning last night's uh, Stanley Cup, the best of seven series concluded, with Boston winning the seventh and final match, taking the series by four matches to three, and Vancouver will have to wait another year. But listening a bit of the news this morning, there seems to be have been some, there seems to have been a bit of violence here and there after the game, but I suppose the Boston people are celebrating, and Vancouver perhaps you know, sadness on the faces. Nevertheless, there's the next year to come, God's willing, 2012, it could be their turn. West Indies against India today, the final one day international in Jamaica. It will start Grenadian time at 11 o'clock, Jamaica an hour uh, behind, so we are in front, so one hour later, Grenada will pick up that broadcast, the West Indies versus India. And Wimbledon Championship starts on Monday. Serena Williams, is out of the Eastbourne Championship. She was beaten by Zira Vodareva in straight set, 6-3, 6-4, but that's her second match in one year. Let's hope she picks up her form and gets ready for the defense of her title on Monday on set court. We're going to start with um, John Lewis, a uh, frequent visit our program. We're glad to have him this morning, but he has two special guests with him, Jane and Stephen King. Good Stephen morning. is in the middle, Jane is at the end. Nice to have you people. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Morning. Great to have yeah. you. And Jane yes. and Stephen are visiting. I think it's their second visit within yes. a year. Yes. So great. Great to see you, as I said to you. You look just the same as six, eight months ago. So nothing has changed. <laughs> Stay in evergreen. For sure. And they are here to facilitate a number of programs yes. in Grenada. And it's all part of the ministry, John. Right. Grenada Institute for Theological That's Education. That's correct. Grenada Institute for Theological education. Theological education. Well, John and Jane, they are from an, an international ministry, BCM. Yes. Am right. I getting it right? Yes, you got it right. perfect. And, and B is for what? And Bible C's Centered what? Ministries. Bible Centered Ministries. Good to have you, and the program is entitled in Grenada, In Step with the Master Teacher. Well, I trust that. Well, before we talk about the venue, but sure. give us a sense of Thank you, in step with the master teacher. Well, the master teacher is mm -hmm. Jesus. Great. So and we have that defined. Now. And for mm -hmm. us to be good teachers, mm -hmm. we need to follow his step and his methods and his the way he taught will, will make us the best teachers. And that is what we, we study, how Jesus taught, and we apply that to our lives. Great. Well, I suppose... It's great to have you to share some of your thoughts and your experiences with us. But John, it's mm -hmm. give us a sense of the programs that they are going to be facilitating here in Grenada. Right. Thank you, Ray. There are two programs that we are running. One is in Grenville, and that's why we are starting out early today to have them an orientation in Grenville. Um, actually, this evening at 5 o'clock, they will meet at the Grenville Evangelical Church. And that is a way to share the knowledge and information with the folks in that part of the island. Um, so this, for the second time, they're doing two centers across the island rather than just one that we did last year. And then the official program will begin on Monday of next week, which is the 20th to the 24th, and is intended to attract superintendents of Sunday schools, um, Sunday school teachers, 
anyone who has a keen interest in training and developing our young people, even parents who may have an interest in learning how we can communicate and to um, train and develop our children in particular. The 4 to 14 years is, is a unique window of opportunity that we have across the globe in terms of how we impact and how we can grow and develop and nurture that age group. What we are finding is that if we wait to reach them later than that, we tend to lose them. And so that's a critical um, window of opportunity that we have in Grenada as well to reach th that age group across the island. So that is in Grenville. And then we come to St. George's, which is from the following week, the 27th to the 1st of July. But this will be a more advanced program because the number of our students and other participants were trained in the basic understanding of the concepts of reaching and training children. But we'll have an advanced program for those who were training others. As a matter of fact, an outcome of the program last year was that we were able to send 12 students and participants to St. Vincent to train some other people. So the, the goal, the vision is that we will equip our own people here and then they could transport that into other parts of the island and other parts of the Caribbean as well. Great. I suppose you bring a wealth of experience mm -hmm. um, in that field. So you want to just give us a sense of how long the couple, the husband and wife team, have been working together? Well, you feel <laughs> to do that. Well, I've been blessed to have been married to Stephen for 23 years. Right. So as a husband-wife team, we have 23 years of experience. But um, I'm also a high school teacher as well. Um, I've been trained professionally for secondary education in several different fields. So I'm coming alongside with my husband with uh, many years, 20, 23 years of teaching experience in both the public and the private uh, schools in the United States and university as well. Great. Well, congratulations. 23 years. That's wonderful. I, I suppose um, techniques and so forth would be fundamental. We challenge with technology, and what would have been applicable for both of your baby days certainly it doesn't apply. So, g give us a sense of what sort of knowledge you hope to impart to the young people in Grenville or the teachers that teachers. are going to be in Grenville. To us, teaching children, we, we think it's common knowledge that you need some sort of visual, mm -hmm. but we believe that. Everyone has things in their house, the things that they have that can be used in a creative way so that we're not tied to expensive materials, high technology. You could use high technology or low technology. It's the technique of the teacher and the teacher building the relationship with their students that really matters, that really enables them to communicate. Um, you wanna Do you want to add to that, Jim? Um, along with so our, our core um, theories with a uh, building relationship with children uh, we depend on the Holy Spirit as well um, and with teaching techniques we also give them very practical advice of how to put together a meaningful lesson so that no matter what activities you choose whether it's a song or a game or Bible verses or stories that they all fit together in a meaningful way that communicate just one truth so the children can learn one truth at a time and have it reinforced. I suppose keeping teachers motivated because the children themselves have to be motivated and they, as they move from one stage to another stage you will know all about that that's your area of profession I suppose that is where the challenge becomes as they get a little older they see other things their interest is drawn and you want to sustain an interest in an, an, an area that certainly is going to help them as they mature and to become more, if I may say, Christian yes. uh, citizens in their own communities. So is this part of the grooming of these young people who are these, not necessarily young, but yeah. these people who are going to be teaching right. future kids? Yes. Yes, yes. We believe God can use children. God can use adults. We see great examples in the Bible. Think of uh, David and some stones and a slingshot and Goliath. Think of uh, Samuel with Eli in the temple and God giving the child the message. We know children can be used, and we clearly know adults can be used. So motivating and keeping that motivation is important. Good. So we have 
a really exciting three day program. Is it three or two days? Well, it's actually a five day program. Five day program in St. Andrew. Right. And Good. And people are, what, it's free or? It's um, registered and the people can give us a call. They can contact us and get information as how they can become part of it. And one of the goal today is as we meet in Grenville is for anyone who have an interest in this program can drop in for an orientation. They will have an explanation of how the program will okay. run and hopefully it creates some interest for those who are still thinking about it to actually participate in the program the following week. Uh, um, what time is the orientation? This, this is at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. At the Grenville at the Evangelical Church. Evangelical right Church. In Grenville there. And it is open to anyone who really have a desire to learn how to um, lead and equip and train others as how to reach out children. Right, so Sunday school teachers, teachers who are in right, primary and secondary school. Right, school system. Right, they yes. can come. They can come as well and even parents as well Great. could benefit from this training as well. Right, let's move on to the adult program that will be from June the 27th. Um, that certainly is a more mature program. You want to give us a sense of the focus of that program? That that program is primarily for people who attended our program last year. Okay. So you're building on last year's? Yes, we're building on last year's program. Um, our intention is to, to, to help them expand what they've learned and to use it better, to help them mobilize what they're doing. Um, how and would and multiply the ministry. And, and multiply themselves among other people to to further enable mm -hmm. good ministry to children here in Grenada. And it's also a time of encouragement. We wanted to to reconnect and to encourage and to meet with our friends and, and to uh, spur them on to continue in the good works that they do. So it's a, a, a sort of refresher mm -hmm. uh, to show that look your interest is not on the way there was a certain day with them. And John, um, the level of participation so far, pretty good? So far good. The interest um, we're receiving from the Grenville area is fairly good. We expect um, quite a number of um, folks from that area to join us this evening. And then also for those here in um, St. George's um, to be able to bring new people in as well. So it will be a, a two-tiered program for those who are new. And for those who have been involved in the program, it would be a uh, refresher for the those who have done the program before, but also it would be new information for those who are joining. So it's open to those two groups of people, and we expect that out of this we'll have a number of people across the different grouping of people, a good cross-section of people to participate in the program. Um, some of the benefits of the program, of course, is that the tools and skills that they will receive that perhaps they're not quite aware of as well. So it provides some new initiative in terms of learning and how do we communicate, how do we um, distill this message which seems to be so heavy sometimes and how do we communicate creatively and effectively to our children. And there are some excellent tools that they will receive, um, they will model for them the lessons They'll be broken up into small teams so that they could interact with one another and guided, of course, by um, Stephen and Jane yes. to facilitate the program. So we look forward to an exciting time of learning here in Grenada. As a matter of fact, even while we are talking about this, we are um, going back and looking at our own curriculum, refocusing the curriculum here in the schools. We are actually in a workshop this week um, through the Ministry of Education and just to to connect the dots that um, through Jane and Stephen oh. we were able to have the Gamos. If you remember Skip Gamo who was here and his wife okay. and did the character solutions program for right. us. So this is a spill off of the initiative and contact here for Grenada. So it makes good when we have friends like that who love Grenada and come back and help us in our training and development. Great. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you. Um, Jane, you as you, sp you spoke about teaching I suppose one of the challenges in teaching is to sustain interest. You could meet a beautiful group of kids and it's the best in the world. There could be a group of kids, they're beautiful, but they're just <laughs> not as obedient as the group before. So how do you sustain your interest and how do you, uh, I suppose that would be important to help others who may, look, I could do it for a year too, but I can't take it beyond that point. You've taken it for 23 years. 23 years. Yeah. And I still love it. Still love it. Yes. Um, what really helps is to look at the children the way God sees them 
it, it's easy to get frustrated on a day-to-day -day basis and, it, and it's easy to to focus in on little things but when when we take a step back and a deep breath and we look at children the way God sees them and how tremendously valuable they are how precious they are and the command he has given to us to invest in them to invest our time and our love and our efforts as we train them you know, Deuteronomy says that whenever we sit down or stand up or when we walk along the road or when we go to lay down or when we eat this is an ongoing process it's not just one chunk of time in a day um, when we look at children as the precious investment that God has entrusted to us it, it changes your perspective and that's my motivation Good. So it's an uh, ever-burning flame. Great. Um, John, there's something special that sustains that interest? Some? To me, in mm -hmm. the, I, I see myself having thousands of children over the years, of all these children that we've invested in in youth. I mean, I've been involved with the children and youth work since 1985. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they are like all my children, and it's years later, you see the rewards. Very often you don't see the rewards close, but 10, 20 years later when you see them growing up and maturing into fine adults, it's very rewarding. John, have you attracted, I don't want to say uh, a balance of male and female, but you were able to attract male uh, Sunday school teachers? Uh, you know, it's uh, a very interesting question, but mm -hmm. we tend to attract a lot more females. <laughs> <laughs> And even in the school system, in this workshop that we are doing through the ministry, it's I mean it's entirely a female population in this workshop. Highly <laughs> <laughs> primary level in terms of a cohort of um, teachers, and that is reflected in the church community as well. We have about uh, 80, 85 percent at least of our population in the church, uh, women, ladies. Is it the strength of ladies and the weakness of men? I don't know if I'd put it that way. It's It does fit in quite well with that nurturing aspect that God has invested in women towards children. But we do need the men to have their influence as well. And when men are, in, are involved, it makes such a, a wonderful, wonderful difference. But it's not for a lack of trying, I suppose, that not uh, trying to get men is not men a lack of trying. Of, as a matter of fact, we expect to have quite a few men um, and the programs that we are promoting um, coming out of our own um, continued training here in Grenada. So we expect quite a number of men to be involved as they were last year. Yes, yes we had quite mm -hmm. a great group. Yes. Yes. And encourage a number of men. A number of men to mm -hmm. be part of the training as well. Um, uh, Stephen, is it a challenge in your community to get men, young men, middle-aged men, old men? We haven't been so. It seems as the years go by, we became that. I, I, my observation is in the U.S., it's very hard to get men involved. But we spent three months in Nigeria this year. Mm -hmm. And in Nigerian, the men seem to be, well, there's probably more men than women involved in teaching the children. So it's not universal. Well, it's maybe cultural. Cultural. Uh, it has to be a recent culture. When I was growing up, it was mainly men. <laughs> Of course, okay. <laughs> right. Many <laughs> say it in the um, attendance of PTA meetings and other functions like that, that there's a couple of guys who come to those kinds of That's functions. Correct. You yeah. can come then? You could come yeah. on one hand That's sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's like there's a, a decreasing number of males. Well, I think we're still there, but the involvement, I think, is... And um, part of the discussion also is how do we keep men involved? Men men are you know why differently of course as we know uh, men want to do something they want to use their hands they want to talk they want to think through ideas um, while women may become involved and listen a lot and um, soak up a lot of stuff men want to get into the action and sometimes our own um, method of equipping and delivering to men is doesn't attract them and so they move away Guys like to be around a table where they could play a game of dominoes or do some sort of activity or play cricket or they, they want to be involved physically. So how do we 
channel our training and development to use that kind of um, natural instinct, as we might say, and how we hone that in a way to use the energies and channel that in the right direction so that it brings the kind of result that we are looking forward to. And that's a challenge for all of us who are seeking to reach out to men. Of course, you may know of the huge movement that began in the States. It's probably not as big, the Promise Keepers, where they actually would have brought hundreds of thousands of men together. And it was a great movement of bringing men into large conferences, but we're not seeing as much impact today as it was perhaps five, ten years ago. But right here in Grenada, if we're going to really make a difference in the, the lives of our men, we have to start with our boys um, and retrain, if we possibly could do that, retrain in the schools, in the homes. Because what we find a lot of times happening, Ray, is that when you sit down with a, a group of boys, young men, and talk about their own history and background, we find the absent father. As a matter of fact, we even find um, a bit of anger or resentment against their knowledge of who the father is, and no involvement in their life, and they grow up perhaps, you know, holding that a, a sort of bitter attitude and spirit toward other men in their lives. And so it's a challenge for us. If we do not the science, this cycle. I suppose the researchers will have to continue to research, research to find out right. where have we perhaps I don't know, change of genes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure um there, 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 there lots of room for the male. Yes. You have your testimony to the yes. fact that um, we can do something yes. useful for subsequent generations. So